AMD's RX 5600 XT is up against some pretty stiff competition from Team Green, namely the RTX 2060 and 2060 Supers. And since in the review of the 5600 XT, in fact this very one, I already compared it to a standard 2060, it's now the 2060 Supers turn. But first, if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. So let's get into it. The system I'm going to be testing this on is this a Next Day PC from CyberPower. It came with a Ryzen 3600X, 16GB of RAM and, most importantly, this MSI RTX 2060 Super Ventus card, which is what we're going to be pitting against the ASUS TUF RX 5600 XT that I already did a review on, which I'll leave in the cards up above. Now this system is one that I did a full written review of on my website so if you want to take a look at it or find out any more you can either go to CyberPower's website or check out the full written review both of which will be linked in the description down below. Now for transparency's sake the driver versions that I was using for these cards will be listed over there but specifically for the AMD card I'm using the latest driver as of testing although as of filming I just found out that AMD have launched 20.3.1 the one I was using was 20.2.2, which should fix most people's issues with their RX 57 and 5600 series cards, if you were having any. And for the NVIDIA side, it's just the latest one that was available. As for the games, I'm testing my usual four at 1080p ultra settings. The games are Call of Duty Modern Warfare with DirectX ray tracing disabled. Also Battlefield 5, again with DXR disabled, but DirectX 12 enabled, still on ultra settings. And then also PUBG and Fortnite 2. So, how did these cards perform? Well, let's take a look. So, starting off with Battlefield 5, you can see that the 2060 Super has a pretty convincing lead over the 5600 XT. In fact, the 1% low of the 2060 Super is actually slightly higher than the average of the 5600 XT. Now, 91 FPS is still very playable, but of course, a lead is a lead. When it comes to COD Modern Warfare, that lead is actually switched around, where the 5600 XT has a reasonable lead over the 2060 Super with 115 FPS versus 107. That's about 5% faster versus Battlefield 5, which is about 15% faster for the Nvidia card. And the same story of, as Battlefield is here for PUBG, with again uh, about a 13% lead for the 2060 Super over the 5600 XT. Where it gets very extreme is the 31% lead the 2060 Super has in Fortnite. It's 141 FPS versus 108, and that is a fairly convincing lead certainly, although the minimums are actually very similar here. So the 2060 Super is on average about 15% faster than a 5600 XT. So case closed, right? Go buy a 2060 Super and be happy with your purchase. Well, not quite. See, the 2060 Super is between 35 and 45% more expensive, like a significant amount, so much so that I would almost class it as being in the next price category up from the 5600 XT, which means that it's more in the ballpark of a 5700 XT, which as I showed in a recent video, is actually kind of trading blows with a 2070 Super. Now, the 5700 XT is not quite as fast, but it's certainly as fast, if not faster, than the 2060 Super, and therefore, considering it's the same price, that seems like a much better value for money. There are also some other factors you might want to consider when buying a new graphics card, other than the just straight raw performance of the card in games. Stuff like, at least on the AMD side, plenty of people will ha be happy to mention AMD's recent driver issues, which I detailed in a video that will be in the cards up above, but essentially the latest driver version seems to have fixed most affected users' problems, uh, even if they you know, had problems in the first place, and so I wouldn't weigh that factor all too heavily. The features are also something you want to keep in mind. Of course, the RTX card supports ray tracing, so if that's something you're specifically after, you know where to head. But AMD does have some interesting features these days, like anti-lag, chill, and a one-click overclock in their driver, as well as a pretty comprehensive streaming setup. Although it is noted that NVIDIA's NVE and C encoder is generally known to be a bit better than AMD's VCE option. So if it were me and my three to 400 pounds, I would honestly go and 
buy an RX 5700 XT as it seems to be the best value for money around right now. If you had to pick on the lower end of that, more like 300, then I think I would probably go with an RTX 2060, the standard version, as I think you get a decent value to performance. Obviously you get ray tracing if you fancy that and hypothetically a bit more stability on the driver front. Although I've heard uh, since doing the AMD video that plenty of Nvidia users have also had issues with their drivers. So I guess it's a bit of a toss up, but you know, that is, uh, that is my thoughts. I would definitely love to hear yours in the comments down below. I'm sure it will be very interesting, but uh, yeah, what car would you pick for the three to 400 pound price range? And do you have any thoughts on uh, either company's drivers? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, if you want to check out the CyberPower system I was using to test these cards out, then do take a look at the written review on the website and at CyberPower's website as well to see pricing, all that good stuff. And you can also check out these cards individually with the links in the description down below too. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. If you want to see more videos like this one, like I said at the start, do hit that subscribe button with the bell notification icon. I post every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, so make sure you stick around for more. And there's also plenty of other links in the description down below if you want to support the channel in more ways than just watching these videos and subscribing. The stuff like Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links that don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you do use them. There's merch for incredibly soft hoodies like this one, or plenty of other stuff too, and even Patreon if you want to get cool rewards like ad free videos and support me directly. Otherwise that is pretty much it. Feel free to take a look at some other videos over there and I'll try and remember to leave all of the videos that I mentioned in the cards up above so check those out too. And if you have any questions feel free to leave those in the comments down below but otherwise we'll see you all in the next video.